There's one that I think is very interesting that uh, has come in regarding the um, cultural transformation uh, that was uh, necessary uh, to, to take colonies brick and mortar, REIT model, and you haven't actually mentioned colony per se yet, so please explain colony, uh, into digital bridges, digital infrastructure models. So that, that's, a, that's a cultural and a digital transformation. How, how did that come about? How easy was it? Uh, what advice would you give to others who have to go through this process? So digital transformation is not easy because <laughs> um, transforming the assets themselves was ended up, John, being the easy part. I think um, the astute uh, writer of that question uh, lasered in on one thing, which is culture. So I started this firm in 2013. Um, built it up to managing about 14 billion of assets in 2017. Um, ultimately found that we were, we were competing for assets and couldn't win because we didn't have enough capital you know, on demand and a fund structure. So we went out and we raised our first fund and we did that in a joint venture with a longtime real estate investor, uh, which happened to be a REIT called Colony Capital. Um, that fundraising from 17 to 19 went incredibly well. We exceeded, it's the largest first time fund ever. We raised 4.1 billion. We invested it in 18 months. It was a smashing success. Returns are now well north of uh, over 20% for the fund. So it's been a great success. The board came to us and said, we really like this digital stuff. Um, we really don't like hotels and industrial parks and shopping centers and other disintermediated real estate. How do we go all digital and how do we get there and what's the fastest way to get there? So I said, well, the first thing is you got to do is you got to buy us. That's kind of the step one. And so we created a merger. We merged Digital Bridge and Colony together. Um, the enterprise from 2019 to March 1 of uh, 2021 was named Colony Capital. At that time, when, when we did the merger, we had 51 billion of real estate assets and we had 14 billion of digital assets. Um, the board gave me the, uh, the privilege and the, and the challenge of selling all the real estate and rotating into digital. So um, I was given two years. I, I'll, I'll never forget this. It was September of 2019. I was at the Bank of America reconference in New York City. And I was on stage with, at, at that point, our, our, our former founder and CEO, Tom Barrick, and he said, we will be 100% digital in two years. And I was like, I'm like, I don't think we rehearsed that, dude. Maybe we should talk about that off stage before you tell the entire world uh, that I'm going to sell $52 billion of real estate in 24 months. Um, what ended up happening was, uh, was a wild ride. Uh, it was two years of uh, a lot of hard work. Um, I got installed as the... Uh, as the CEO um, about six months early, I got into the chair in July of uh, 2020. I was supposed to become CEO January 1, 2021. Um, and, and it started with changing the attitude and changing the people. It's the same cookbook that I've used for almost 30 years. And you know, we had a scrappy, aggressive management team. Um, they had a management team that had been around for 20, 30 years. They were investing in real estate. They liked dividends. They didn't care about returns. And, you know, and they had a culture. They had a culture of, you know, 500 employees and 27 offices and $300 million a year in GNA. Well, my culture today is we're down to 186 employees. We've got seven offices, and I've taken that GNA burn to 113 million. Sold the corporate plane, closed a lot of fancy offices, and um, you know, we're we come to work every day with our hard hats and we go to work. And so, unfortunately, we had to we had to say goodbye to a lot of people that weren't built for the digital economy. Um, we sold a lot of real estate and thankfully that real estate, the people went with that real estate. So whether we, we sold hotels, industrial properties, we sold our, uh, our, our New York City office buildings to Scott Reckler, who's a friend of mine, those people went with it. So as we sold assets, the people moved with the assets, which was good. And some people we had to, we had to part ways with, which is uncomfortable, but um, part of great leadership is discomfort. You've got to be prepared to be uncomfortable. Um, I just finished rotating 76 billion of assets in 24 months. Um, massive cost cutting, taking net leverage from 14 times to six times. I had to make a series of really tough decisions. Uh, COVID hits, we run out of liquidity. I had to boost liquidity. And you just, you got to expect the unexpected. But look, if there's one piece of advice I can give to this entire uh, audience, it's students only. Um, making hard decisions is tough we all delay making hard decisions because we want to do the right thing. When it's time to make a change, you make the change. Bad management is when you don't make changes quick enough. And in this economy, 
you move or you're dead and you got to move quick. So don't capitulate. You know, good leadership is about, you know, gathering the data, having a really good plan, having great people around you, and then building consensus around that plan. And once it's done, you go. There's only one person that can make the decision, which is ultimately in our organization, it was me. But the amount of consensus that we built to arrive at the decisions that we made around restoring liquidity, reducing leverage, rotating the cash, selling old assets that didn't make sense for our mission, but ruthless efficiency and just making a list and saying, these are the things we're gonna do. Here's the timeline that we're gonna do them. We committed to those dates, John, we delivered. And most importantly, you know, I took over a company at a dollar share price and we've restored credibility and we were the best performing management team of the REIT sector last year. We went from probably being the worst rated management team by ISS Investor Services to being the number one rated management team in one year. And how do you do that? You do that by being decisive, by looking people in the eye and telling them what you're gonna do and ultimately um, delivering on those commitments. Um, Wall Street is very unforgiving when you don't deliver on commitments. And so as a young public company CEO, I've just been about creating clear uh, markers on the road that public investors can say, we're gonna go there, we're gonna go there, we're gonna go there. And then as we go there, we exceed it. And everything we did, we exceeded, including the rotation of the assets. So there's so many applied learnings to what I just went through the last two years. It was incredibly hard. Um, but once again, it just comes back to one thing, just having great people, having people right. sitting in skill positions that knew how to execute what I needed to get executed. I couldn't have done it without the, the, the great partners that work at, you know, that work at DigiBridge today. And then finally, once we were rotated, we got to go back to DigiBridge. We changed the name Colony back to DigiBridge again and uh, new branding, new logo, new attitude. Um, and the company's performing really well. Um, and we'll have another great quarter this year.